We find that Representative Slayton has engaged in inappropriate sexual conduct with a subordinate. That behavior was induced by alcohol that Representative Slayton provided to that 19-year-old subordinate. Representative Slayton then acted systematically to influence that subordinate and multiple witnesses and obstruct the investigation into the matter to the detriment of both our chamber and those who work here. As you will read shortly, this committee unanimously recommends that the House discipline Representative Slayton by expelling him from a member of this body. Oof, expulsion. That is the gravest of punishments for someone in legislature, and it was handed down for now former Texas State Representative Brian Slayton. Yeah, that's right, he did not get to leave on his own terms. This is what we know per the Texas Tribune. Pressure had mounted on the Royce City Republican to resign since Saturday when the House General Investigative Committee released a 16 page report finding Slayton, who was 45 and married, had engaged in inappropriate sexual conduct with this aide. In the written investigation report, the committee said Slayton gave the 19 year old intern and another young staffer alcohol at his home. That he had sex with the intern after she was intoxicated and that he later showed the intern a threatening email but said everything would be fine if the incident was kept quiet. Sounds pretty predatory to me. And it's interesting too, because in terms of this expulsion, yeah, that is the gravest thing that could happen professionally. But I'd love to see some things happen in terms of criminal prosecution, because it doesn't sound like she was able to consent. But of course, I'm sure former Representative Brian Slayton would argue just the opposite, which I don't know how he'd do, but whatever. Anyway, we also know that he asked a fellow lawmaker to keep his behavior secret as well. That's something the committee found. His resignation letter, which he presented to Governor Greg Abbott did not address his relationship with the girl at all. He just said that he looks forward to spending more time with his family. And a number of his supporters and even fellow conservative Texas Republican, Steve Toth turned against him. Yeah, this is what he said. Inconceivable, his resignation gave no apology to the young woman he violated, his wife whom he betrayed or his district that he failed, no remorse. No acceptance of responsibility, he's the victim that rides off into the sunset. That was the resignation of a narcissist, absolutely it was. But still, as far as I'm concerned, it was recommended for him to be expelled. And I think that that's often the best you can get from these Republicans. But as far as Slayton's attorney said, well, last month he claimed that the claims were absolutely outrageous and false, which isn't surprising because this is also his stance. Slayton was among the most socially conservative lawmakers in the chamber and had been one of the session's loudest voices for cracking down on drag shows and decrying drag artists. It's groomers who want to sexualize children. He said children don't need to be focused on sex and sexualization and we need to let them just grow up to be children and let them do that as they're getting closer to being an adult. That's really interesting since clearly he was preying on a 19 year old child by giving her alcohol despite her being underage and then having sex with her when she was unresponsive. Yeah, well the GOP isn't just trying to target drag queens, but also be the scapegoat for their groomer behavior. Yes, that's very accurate. According to this AP report, they had found that between 2017 and 2021, at least 120 state lawmakers and 41 states have faced public allegations of sexual misconduct or harassment. Among those cases was an Idaho lawmaker who was eventually convicted in 2022 of raping a legislative intern. It is incredibly disheartening. And as I speak of often when I speak of workplace sexual harassment, which can include an assault, rape, is the fact that when you have these young people in this environment, what you're going to see is a lot of predatory behavior in terms of attacking individuals and doing what Slayton did in terms of telling this girl, you need to keep quiet, don't say anything if you want to protect your professional aspirations, your trajectory. And that's not what these young people deserve. They deserve to be in a situation where they're learning and growing professionally, not put in, a, put in instances where they're suffering lifelong trauma. David. Well, I think it's so interesting, <clears throat> and we've seen this time and again, that sometimes people who are the most hardline doctrinaire in terms of being extreme in their positions turn out to be the ones who, if you're the most anti-gay, then it turns out you're the one who's leading a secret you know, LGBTQ life. If you're the most concerned about drag shows, you're the one who's having an extramarital affair and sexualizing children. And so I just, there's something about our society and the repression that goes on that causes particularly lawmakers, people who are seeking a certain celebrity to go ahead and say, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna prove to myself that I'm really not that way because 
just I'm just going to project. I'm going to project my anger onto other people like the LGBT community or the trans community, whatever it is. And yet these are people who are leading just incredibly twisted double lives. And the fact that they can't be honest with themselves, I think psychologists have a field day. And secondly, there's a part about this that was a little bit disappointing to me in that when this first came out, there was some suggestion that there were some Republicans who were gonna try to rally around Slayton. And it was only after there was certain polling that was done mm-hmm. by other Republicans that the Republicans said, okay, yeah, no, we, we you know, this is a this is a bad thing politically, we're gonna have to dump him. The fact that there are certain people that just can't come out right off the bat and say, this is wrong, he needs to go, and they have to wait until they put their finger in the wind. To me, that is almost as revolting. Oh, absolutely. The fact that they're driven by what's a good look as opposed to what's actually the right thing to do in a showing of having some integrity and character. But I'm I'm really not surprised in how his fellow Republicans responded, largely because the thing is, is it takes a village to protect a predator. They've known who he is. Most people know who he is without a doubt. You have to know because individuals like this do not operate under the stealth of night. They show you who they are. And the thing is, is that they're, this is also not one offs type of situation, that kind of predation, that is a behavior. So I'm sure there are others out there who have probably been victimized by this individual. And I truly hope that his wife, and I know that they had separated at one point, I hope she makes a wise decision for herself and their child in terms of moving forward. Because as far as I'm concerned, he ain't it, he ain't got it. Any closing words, David, about the GOP and their predation? I mean, look, the, these things do have a political cost, and we've seen before, particularly you know, congressional races, that when there's a major political scandal uh, of a sexual nature, it can hurt that party, especially when that party is being deemed to be something of a of a hypocrite. Uh, and so, I just I think you know, Texas politics is a fascinating one to watch, and I think this is perhaps an even bigger political earthquake in Texas than a lot of Republicans had wanted to appreciate or acknowledge.